Hi, this is Kevin C. Mason from Jack Monkey Games, and it's a really cold morning uh, in Sydney. Uh, the weather has been churning, and I had the dumbass idea to shave my head about two weeks before this weather. Um, yeah, I'm not going to have that happen again. Besides, I'm told it looks scary. Like, I want to be scary. Well, I'm getting ready to run a Numenera campaign, and... We're going to have some really new players, people that have never played role-playing games ever. We also have some players that are my, the best players I've had the privilege to work with. So it's going to be a very interesting group. And because this is also a new world, a new system, I'm the only person who's even heard of Numenera in this particular group. Uh, so this will be... This will be a lot of fun. Now, one of the things that I'm doing is creating a keynote presentation that runs on loop while I'm game mastering. Now, before we get started with the tutorial on how to build that, uh, I want to say a few things. One, I make a lot of grammar mistakes throughout this, uh, spelling mistakes, and understand that I'm severely dyslexic to the point that it's taken me 45 years to use, to properly spell the word character. A word that I use every day, 45 years. And half the time I don't get it right unless spell check is running. So, you know, this is probably gonna annoy you, but I can't help it, literally, cannot help it. So, how to properly use this? So, one of the things to realize is that this is to run in the background. You're to make it so the players are almost ignoring it. Now, trust me, they will pay attention to it, but it shouldn't be something that you stop everyone and say, okay, everyone, we're going to watch this PowerPoint presentation. Don't do that. That's a bad idea. You want to start rolling the dice. You want to start gaming immediately. Just have that running in the background. Now, there's... A couple purposes for this. I do it for a few things. One, I use it for world, world building. So it has common knowledge. The things that all the characters should know, even though the players don't. So, for example, what is a cipher? So it has a definition of a cipher. What is a nano? Um, what is the name of the city they're in? What is the name of the king? that resides over the city. So these sort of things are just going to be running in the background. Um, other things it has is bits of knowledge that players who are playing Numenera should probably know. Like, it's a bad idea to have five ciphers in your hand. Probably not the best idea, especially if you're only first tier. Okay, that could be really, really bad. Or interesting. So the idea is, is that it gives them the knowledge when the player is ready for it. So it runs in the background. I'm not paying attention to it. I'm not forcing anyone to to watch it. But in between turns, I often catch the players taking a look at it. Now here's some ways that you can get it so the players will pay more attention to it. It has slides that are plot hooks or news that is from their previous campaigns. So in my Starfall campaign, often if there is a, um, a bank heist or something like that, I'll put it in a news report giving the details incorrectly of the bank heist and it, the players find that really amusing. So they will often take a look at that to go, Hey, there's that monster on the island. You know, I think it might be our friend. All kinds of great things. And the players just love these things. So um, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to use Keynote. Now, I use Keynote because I'm a Mac guy. I worked for Apple for eight years. 
uh, and I used to teach this, so this is the software I use the most, but you could use any software that allows presentation and that will loop. Now that's the key thing, we're going to put this on loop so you don't have to pay attention. The other thing is, is that you want to make sure that all the all of the slides are set to automatically move to the next slide without clicking. Otherwise, you're going to be spending the entire time going click, 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 and that's really annoying. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off by creating a background. Now, with Numenera, because it's a science fantasy, I like to use a parchment background because it's just cool. And now I'm going to go and put in Numenera. I'm going to change the font to something that's a little bit different. Um, I'm not going to use the logo um, from the book because that's actually a trademark, um, which won't be a problem in the home game, but because I'm doing this in a video, I like to play nice with everybody and make sure that... Um, I'm not using any logos or artwork uh, that I don't have the right to use. One of the advantages of being married to a IP lawyer. Okay, so now with the font, I'm going to be using a high tech font for everything else. So we've got that juxtaposition of the science fantasy kind of feel. Now, one of the key things that you want to do is make sure that you make it so everything is easy to read. Remember, everything should be able to be read at a glance. Okay, so since this is the template, I'm going to create a transition for Magic Move, and I'm going to set it so it is on delay for 10 seconds. It will automatically click after 10 seconds. Now I like using magic move, magic move because it's a subtle transition. You don't want to be too annoying with spinning text and other things like that. Now once I set the the template what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this to duplicate this first slide. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm now going to make the template for the common knowledge. Now one of the important things to do with the different styles of templates is to give them their own feel. So you, you can do this by changing the background, you can do this by changing the font, you can do all sorts of little things so this way there is a consistency. So the common knowledge slides should be in one color, the how to play should be in another, and then the plot hooks should also be there. Now notice that I moved the background. Now what's going to happen is, is that when it, trans it does a transition between the how to play and the common knowledge, it's going to move this background. Now for the plot hook slide, I'm going to change it up a little bit because I want to make sure that this stands out the most. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a circuit board kind of feel, and I'm doing this by creating these blue lines with dots. I'm going to animate these by using Magic Move. Now I'm calling it news, not plot hooks, because calling it a plot hook is a little bit on the nose. Now this is going to be the few times that I actually use a text animation and I'm using the typewriter transition because it will stand out the most without being too overpowering. Now I'm going to create some feel slides. I call them feel slides because it adds the feeling of that I want to portray in the game. Now I've created my own artwork but grabbing pictures off the net works just fine. In this particular case, I want to have the feeling of Joust the video game. Um, long story about that, check out my previous episode to uh, get more information on that. 
you can use images off of the net, um, though if you're going to be publishing this, I would warn you of copyright. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is now that I have my template, I'm going to start duplicating these and changing the text so it's more appropriate. Okay, let me show you a trick with magic move. Remember that slide way back when that I used the computer design? Well, what I'm doing is that I'm moving around everything. So this way, when I do it, does a transition, it will move smoothly. Check this out. Okay, so here is the exported video. In most cases, both Keynote and PowerPoint will export to either um, a MP4 or something else like that. Um, and this is kind of an example of the timing that I'm using. Now in the actual presentation I've done, I'm gonna add about 10 more slides of each particular type.